Hey everyone, Zero Fossil Fuel. Today we're going to talk about what not to do with one of my pulse width modulators. Uh, this unit was sent back to me, it is serial number 67, by the customer that I sold it to. He used it successfully for about a month on an 18 wheel semi. Um, the driver of the vehicle, when he reached a destination at, the, at a remote end, decided to change out the electrolyte himself and got it a little bit too strong. And uh, what happened was the peak impulse current that this pulse width modulator was attempting to drive into was off the map. And this is what happens when you drive a pulse width modulator into a virtual dead short. Now, it does not help that the design of the cell that this was attached to was a parallel plate design, meaning the plates were oriented and connected plus minus, plus minus, plus minus, plus minus, and so on, no neutral plates at all. The uh, peak impulse current on a cell design like that can easily go off the map very quickly if the electrolyte is allowed to get too strong. Uh, in this case, the, the driver actually replenished the electrolyte and made it too strong. The sequence of events for the failure is C7 will overheat because the peak impulse currents are so high and that capacitor does a lot of work. So if you, if you drive it into a dead short, that's what's going to happen. C7 fails. It sprays electrolyte all over the inside of the case. You'll notice the screw heads. All right, Those used to be silver, but the electrolyte has attacked the zinc plating on the nuts and on the screw heads inside. The MOSFET has failed, and R14 has failed. I haven't tested the board itself yet, but R14 tends to act like a fuse, and hopefully it protected the electronics on the printed circuit board so that uh, the, the rest of the circuit doesn't have to be replaced as well. Otherwise, if it does, and this is a, a virtual total loss, um, but there is evidence, again, of overheating of the, of the R12, which is a piece of 14-gauge wire, as well as the blue wire, which is 16-gauge stranded, that interconnects C7 to the positive input terminal. Just to give you an idea of how badly that overheated, there's an original piece of that blue wire, and you can see the difference in the color. So, this is what not to do, and uh, I'm going to be testing this out. I did find that the uh, transient suppression diode survived, but I think that's about the only thing that survived on this side of the cell, or on this side of the pulse width modulator, I mean. Okay, continuing on, I disassembled all of the uh, major components in, in this uh, pulse width modulator. You can see how badly it uh, corroded the screw head terminals and the solder connections from the electrolyte that sprayed out of C7 when it failed and overheated. I really need to show you the top of C7. That used to be silver. C7 got so hot that it literally melted the aluminum at the top of the capacitor and that's where it exploded and leaked its elec electrolyte and spread the electrolyte fumes throughout the interior of the pulse width modulator case. This side bulged and the actual terminals that the wires were soldered to melted from the heat that was created by this when, when it uh, failed. Any of the rosin that had remained on the bottom of the PC board, you see has become black from reacting with the uh, fumes of the electrolyte from the C7 capacitor. And some of the traces, some of the copper traces that were part of this PC board have literally been etched completely away. This board is a total loss. The only thing the only thing that remains, even the fan, when C7 fails, the fan is not protected from the transient voltages and the internal electronics of the fan will fail also. The only thing that remains of any value 
to this pulse width modulator is the case and the heat sink itself. That's it. So I may reuse it to build, to build another one, but uh, I will have to inform the previous owner of this one of the bad news and uh, let him know that uh, he's going to need another one. So that's it for now. Um, once again, folks, this is what not to do with one of my pulse width modulators. Do not feed it into a dead short because it will still try to regulate at whatever amperage you have it set at, but the peak impulse current will be off the map and components will start to fail. And what caused this unit to fail is a parallel plate cell design that was recharged with electrolyte that was much too strong and it appeared to the, to the pulse width modulator as a virtual dead short.